In this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about gabapentin, especially what it does to the body and about specific side effects. This is especially important if you are about to start gabapentin or you're already established on it. I'm also going to answer three frequently asked questions in my clinics. Does gabapentin cause breathing problems? Can I get addicted to it? Are there similar medicines to gabapentin? These are really important questions which you should be fully informed about when making a decision about taking any medication and I will answer these at the end of the video. So this video will help you to understand more about gabapentin and allow you to make a logical decision about taking it. So let's get started. So what is gabapentin? It's a medicine used to treat epilepsy. It's also taken for nerve pain, which can be caused by different conditions, including diabetes and shingles, or sometimes nerve pain which happens after an injury. So how does it work? In epilepsy, it's thought that gabapentin stops seizures by reducing the abnormal electrical activity in the brain. With nerve pain, it's thought to block pain by affecting the pain messages traveling through the brain down the spine. So how and when do you take it? Gabapentin is available on prescription. It comes as tablets, capsules, and a liquid that you can swallow. Each capsule of gabapentin contains 100, 300, or 400 milligrams of gabapentin. Each tablet contains 600 or 800 milligrams of gabapentin. The usual dose for adults for epilepsy is the same to treat nerve pain, which is 900 to 3,600 milligrams a day, split into three doses throughout the day. To prevent side effects, your doctor will prescribe a low dose to start with and then increase it over a few days. Once you find a dose that suits you, the dose will usually stay the same. Swallow gabapentin capsules and tablets whole with a drink of water or juice and do not chew them. You can take gabapentin with or without food and whatever you decide, try to stick to the same thing each day. Try to space your doses evenly throughout the day. For example, you could take it first thing in the morning, early afternoon, and at bedtime. So how long does it take to work? It takes a few weeks for gabapentin to work fully. You may still have seizures or pain during this time. So can you drink alcohol while taking gabapentin? Yes, you can drink alcohol, but it may make you feel sleepy or tired. During the first few days of taking it, it might be best to stop drinking alcohol until you see how the medicine affects you. So how long do you take it for? If you have epilepsy, it's likely that once your condition is under control, you'll still need to take gabapentin for many years. If you have nerve pain, once your pain has gone, you'll continue to take gabapentin for several months or longer to stop it coming back. So what do you do if you forget to take it? If you forget a dose, take it as soon as you remember. If it's within two hours of the next dose, it's better to leave out the missed dose and take your next dose as normal. Never take two doses at the same time and never take an extra dose to make up for a forgotten one. If you have epilepsy, it's important to take this medicine regularly because missing a dose may trigger a seizure. If you forget doses often, it may help to set an alarm to remind you. What do you do if you take too much? Taking too much gabapentin can cause unpleasant side effects. Contact your healthcare provider if you take more than your prescribed dose of gabapentin and you feel dizzy or sleepy. You have double vision. You start slurring your words. You have diarrhea or you pass out or faint. Stopping gabapentin. Now it's important not to stop gabapentin suddenly because you may have severe withdrawal syndrome. This can have unpleasant symptoms, including anxiety, difficulty sleeping, feeling sick, pain, 
or sweating. It's possible to prevent withdrawal seizures and other symptoms by gradually reducing the dose of gabapentin, so talk to your healthcare provider who will advise you on how to reduce your dose gradually. So common side effects of gabapentin include feeling sleepy, tired or dizzy, feeling sick, being sick, diarrhea, mood changes, swollen arms and legs, blurred vision, dry mouth, difficulty getting an erection, weight gain, memory problems, headaches, getting more infections than usual. So what are the serious side effects? Call a doctor or emergency services straight away if you have serious side effects including thoughts of harming or killing yourself. A small number of people taking gabapentin have had suicidal thoughts which can happen after only a week of treatment. A high temperature, swollen glands that do not go away, your eyes or skin turn yellow, unusual bruises or bleeding, severe tiredness or weakness, unexpected muscle pain or weakness, with or without a rash, these may be symptoms of a serious reaction. Long-lasting stomach pain, feeling sick or being sick, these may be warning signs of an inflamed pancreas. Muscle pain or weakness, and you're having dialysis treatment because of kidney failure. Seeing things that are not there called hallucinations. In rare cases, it's possible to have a serious allergic reaction to gabapentin. Now these are not all the side effects of gabapentin. For a full list, see the leaflet inside your medicines packet. Cautions with other medicines. Now some medicines may affect how gabapentin works or increase the chance of you having side effects. Antacids can reduce the amount of gabapentin that the body takes in, so it does not work as well. To stop this happening, if you need to take an antacid, take it at least two hours before or after your dose of gabapentin. And tell your doctor if you're taking any of these medicines before you start gabapentin treatment. Strong painkillers such as morphine, these can make you very tired and dizzy when you start taking gabapentin. Antidepressants such as amitriptyline or fluoxetine. Antipsychotic medicines for mental health problems like schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. A medicine to prevent malaria called mefloquin. So who may not be able to take gabapentin? Gabapentin can be taken by most adults However, it is not suitable for some people. Let your healthcare provider know if you have ever had an allergic reaction to gabapentin or any other medicine, have ever misused or been addicted to a medicine, if you are trying to get pregnant or are already pregnant, or if you're on a controlled sodium or potassium diet or your kidneys do not work well, and do remember that gabapentin liquid contains sodium and potassium, so speak to your doctor before taking it. So one of the commonly asked questions in my clinic includes, does gabapentin cause breathing problems? Now the UK medicines watchdog, the MHRA, and the US medicines watchdog, the FDA, have reported that gabapentin has been associated with a rare risk of severe respiratory depression, which means that breathing becomes difficult and oxygen cannot get into the body. People who are particularly at risk are those who use opioid pain medicines and in conditions such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, where there is reduced lung function. The elderly are also at higher risk. Now patients and caregivers should seek medical attention immediately if you or someone you are caring for experiences symptoms of respiratory problems because these can be life-threatening. Symptoms to watch for include confusion or disorientation, unusual dizziness or lightheadedness, 
extreme sleepiness or lethargy, slowed, shallow or difficult breathing, unresponsiveness which means a person doesn't answer or react normally or you can't wake them up, bluish coloured or tinted skin especially on the lips, fingers and toes. Always inform your healthcare provider about all the drugs you are taking, including all prescription drugs, medicines bought from the pharmacy, herbal medicines and other substances such as alcohol. The second question I'm asked is are there similar medicines to gabapentin? Pregabalin, also called Lyrica, is a medicine that works in a similar way to gabapentin so it also carries the same warning about the risk of severe respiratory depression. Like gabapentin, it's taken for epilepsy and nerve pain. It can also be taken for anxiety, but there are differences between progabalin and gabapentin. Progabalin can be taken less often and in different doses to gabapentin. And if you need to change to progabalin, your doctor will explain how to swap safely from gabapentin. So another question I'm asked in clinic is, can I get addicted to gabapentin? Some people have become addicted to gabapentin. If this happens, you'll have withdrawal symptoms after you stop taking the medicine. So it's important to talk to your healthcare provider if you're concerned about becoming physically dependent on gabapentin. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see new videos that are posted every week. And please make a comment in the comment section to tell me what you enjoyed about this video or what topics you'd like to learn more about. You can also check out my other latest videos.